time, there's a 10 minute time limit on this presentation. Um, please, all presenters, please state your name uh, first and last clearly for the record. Any persons affiliated with the project should speak during this time. That includes owners, developers, designers, and consultants. Uh, the board can ask questions of the applicant at any time, but by custom, we ask questions on the heels of the applicant's presentation. So the board questions will be followed by a period of public comment. Again, if you were speaking during this time, um, please clearly state your first and last name for the record. Public comment will be followed by city staff comments and recommendations. Uh, after we hear from city staff, the applicant will have the opportunity to respond um, or clarify anything that was raised during public comment or during the city staff recommendations. Um, this time will be limited to five minutes. And again, please respond only to uh, any comments raised by the public uh, or staff and, and clarify. Um, after the applicant has a period of time to respond, this will be followed by board discussion and a vote. Uh, the following items have been withdrawn or deferred. Uh, item number five, 49 South Battery. Item number seven, 10 South Acton Wharf. And item number eight, 1108 King Street. Please turn off your cell phones and other devices uh, if you are speaking and have your mic on during this meeting. And please limit your comments to architecture only. That is the purview of this board. Comments related to zoning, such as parking, traffic, lot coverage, livability concerns, those are not within our purview and they cannot be voiced here. Uh, now I'll let Kim do some virtual meeting protocol. Thank you, Lindsay. <clears throat> Staff will control the PowerPoint presentation that includes everything submitted by the applicant by the deadline in accordance with the submittal requirements. Applicants simply need to ask staff to advance to the next slide during your presentation. Applicants, staff, and board members are required to give their name whenever speaking. Video and microphone has been disabled for all attendees. Attendees, not board members or staff, will only be given capabilities to speak when they're called upon during the public comment period. Chat and the Q&A functions have been disabled for everyone. The public comment portion. The applicants and all team members and the public have been required to register indicate the project they wish to comment on and submit any documents in advance of the meeting. Just as in an in-person meeting, all applications heard today are part of a public meeting format. If you've registered and will speak during the public comment portion of the meeting, you'll need to state your name and address for the record. Those members of the public that have registered will be called on in order by project. Staff will call on the registered members of the public to speak for each project. Unregistered members of the public who raise their hand will, will not be called on. For the board, the board will, members will be called on by the chairperson for comments and for their vote on a motion. Each member when voting should respond yay in favor or nay not in favor. The chair shall reread the motion verbatim. The board member making the motion should correct the chair if he has not reread the motion accurately. If a board member needs to recuse, he or she will be temporarily removed from the meeting and placed back in the meeting at the start of the next agenda item. If the board needs to go into an executive session, they will call into a separate conference line and all video and audio on Zoom will be temporarily turned off until they're ready to return to the regular meeting. Results and staff comments will be posted on the city website at www.charleston-sc.gov slash BAR. These proceedings are being recorded and broadcasted to the city of Charleston's YouTube channel. Thank you, Kim. Uh, we'll move to agenda item number one, 974 Ashley Avenue. Kim? Thank you. 974 Ashley Avenue is requesting final approval for a complete demolition of the building. The property is in Wagner Terrace, constructed in 1935 in an historic materials purview district. Familiarize yourself with the property. Um, here it is, just south of San Susi and um, on the east side of the street. This is an image of it from the street. Different angle. And here are the Sanborn maps from 1944 and 1955. And if Mr. Plyler is with us, Mr. Plyler, you have the floor whenever you're ready. Mr. Plyler, you are on mute.
Hello. We can hear you now. Okay. Yes, uh, I'm requesting to remove the structure in order to build a new home. This structure is uh, very difficult to use. I have a tenant who lives there. My nephew lived in it when we did some rehab work on it a few years ago when he was at med school. And when we get the heavy rains of an inch and a half or so of rain, we get water on the first floor. My tenant runs a dehumidifier in the place all the time. We have to keep a wet vac there to vacuum the water off the floor when it rains heavy. We trenched a ditch around the house to the back of the lot to try to control the water problem. The stairwell is so narrow, only one person can go up and down at one time. The ceiling height on the first floor, I'm 6'1", and under the header beam in the room on the first floor, my head just about touches the top. The kitchen is minuscule. It only has a sink and a tiny cabinet and one about 12 inch high wall cabinet and then a stove and a microwave. There are no built-in closets in the house, downstairs or upstairs. There's a coat rod that runs along the wall for the bedroom upstairs. The uh, ceiling heights are low on the side walls of the dwelling and doesn't provide very much access for building a closet or whatever. It's just that we could not add central heating and air conditioning to the place. When we worked on it a, a few years ago, we have to have window air. The only heat in the unit is the gas wall furnace uh, that we attached on the wall downstairs to try to heat the place. It's just that it's so old and the front section is the only old section. The rear bedroom part was added some years later and that bedroom is very small, maybe 10 by 10. The whole structure together is only 600 and some square feet. Um, I'd like to build a new home in the characteristic of the neighborhood and so on uh, that would be accommodating and look a world better in compliance with what the neighborhood is today. This place was built as the front cottage that you're seeing there where the water heater is on outside the house. That was the original uh, size of the dwelling. Uh, the width of that and then across the front was all that was there. That's the only thing that's old and it's very uh, difficult to use. Uh, I would request to tear it down so I can build a new home. And I have a contractor that I'm hiring to uh, contract a new house. And of course we would apply through permits and all that. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Plyler. Do we have any questions from board members? I don't. It's just that the Wagner Terrace homeowners group asked me to join them on Monday in a meeting. And after some discussion, uh, the neighbors were in agreement that uh, they felt that uh, removing it uh, would not be an objection to them. And I appreciated that uh, discussion and so on. And I'm glad that they recommended that I could remove it. Thank you, Mr. Plyler. My fellow board members, do you all have any questions for Mr. Plyler? No. Glenn Gardner, um, I, I have one for Mr. Plyler, if that's okay. Um, I guess my, my main question, it really kind of follows a little bit of a comment, but I, in my recognizing that the, the architectural value of, of this building is a bit limited and being a simple structure, have you considered uh, using the old part of this building? We know that not all of it is historic, but if you considered working the old part of the building into a design for a new structure? No, I haven't because when we did the work on the unit of uh, in 2012, the city inspectors at that time assured me, you will never get a permit to rehab this or add to it or make it any kind of way a better structure. Uh, 
the, the first floor level is below grade. And that's the main problem with the structure. There's no way to redeem the ceiling height in the building. Uh, the foundation wall, skirt wall is about two and a half feet high that's on the side, um, say beneath the wall that we're seeing there. And it's concrete. And then above that is two befores that comes up to make up the ceiling height that's there. There's no way to raise the structure to keep it uh, from flooding in the future. The survey on the lot that you saw pictured at first, the level at the sidewalk is 12.1 feet uh, above sea level. And so that illustrates how low the land is and uh, the difficulty I have there is really uh, makes it impossible uh, to do. And of course, a new structure is going to have to be, I think about three feet off the ground, you know, crawl space. We have any board comment, board questions? I don't have any other questions. I'll move on to public comment. Okay, Kim, I see a position statement from Preservation Society. Do we have um, Aaron or Anna Catherine here? The Preservation Society wishes to have their thoughts read into the record. Okay. The letter from the Preservation Society of Charleston, position statement to the Board of Architectural Review, small for 974 Ashley Avenue. Dear board members, the Preservation Society has reviewed this application and observed the building on site. And while there have been insensitive additions to the structure, we feel it retains considerable integrity of form and material. We would not be opposed to potential demolition of later additions, but are opposed to this request for wholesale demolition. The Preservation Society would encourage the applicant to think creatively about how to rehabilitate and incorporate this former accessory building as part of redevelopment of the property. Thank you for considering our position in this matter. Sincerely, Aaron Minigan, Director of Historic Preservation. We also have an email from Amanda Gersky dated April 22nd, 2021. Hello, Kim. Hello. Excuse me. That was just an email sending the letter and now I will read the letter. This is a letter from the Wagner Terrace Neighborhood Association. Dear members of the Board of Architectural Review, the Wagner Terrace Neighborhood Association has been presented with a request to completely demolish the structures at 974 Ashley Avenue. While the vote was not unanimous, neighbors generally agreed these structures are not of any architectural merit and do not need to be preserved as part of the street's character. Sincerely, the Wagner Terrace Neighborhood Association. And I believe that is it for public comment, at least in the um, letters and position statements for 974 Ashley Avenue. Kim, do we have anyone speaking from the public? We do, we have April Wood from Historic Charleston Foundation. April, you have the floor. April Wood, Historic Charleston Foundation. HCF has reviewed the application for a complete demolition of the building at 974 Ashley Avenue. This is a historic accessory structure that we understand once was a garage constructed in 1935 and contributes to the historic character of the neighborhood. The historic portions of the structure are intact, retain character and are readily apparent. We respectfully recommend denial of this application for complete demolition of the building at 974 Ashley Avenue, but we would be in support of selective demolition of the building including the removal of the insensitive additions that obscure the historic character of the structure. We suggest that many of the livability problems mentioned in the presentation would be addressed by returning the structure into its original use as a garage with a new house in the front, potentially relocating the structure further to the back of the lot to make room for the new house. Thank you. Thank you, April. Yeah, we also have, sorry, Lindsay, we also have um, Kevin Aberly. Kevin, you have the floor whenever you're ready. Perfect. Well, <clears throat> um, 
So my name is Kevin Aberly. I live at 367 President Street. And I just, um, I guess, would echo the same thoughts that April just expressed. Um, if the building is simple, it's only simple because it was a, a dependency, if you will, for the house next door. It was never supposed to be anything fancy. It's true to its form. Detached garages were the character of the neighborhood. And in fact, they were marketed because you could have a detached garage behind your house. And it, it just seems like um, it would be a shame to lose the building when it seems to have a lot of uh, potential for reuse. And I guess it would be odd that in a day and age when so many homeowners are clamoring for a small building like that behind the main house to demolish it um, to build a new house. So just, I would, again, I would also uh, be okay with removing some of the portion on the back, the newer portion of it, but I would hate to see the whole thing come down. Thank you, Kevin. Pam, is that it for public comment? That is, yep, thank you. There's some interior shots that uh, the applicant didn't go through. And we can move on to city staff comments and recommendations. Thank you. Well, the building is historic. It's not a building that has a lot of architectural merit. This is not one of Wagner Terrace's typical 20th century garage vernacular that adds an incredible amount of character to the streetscape. The historic elements remaining are the siding and the beadboard sheathing under the eaves. If it was once a garage, the siding has been added since then. And the novelty siding appears to be of the same vintage on the front, north, and south. So the siding is likely not original and has been altered when the garage was converted into, into a dwelling. And lastly, the applicant is demolishing the building to re-knit the streetscape and con construct a primary residence in the street, which was the original intent for these lots. So the staff's recommending final approval. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Mr. Plyler, did you want to respond to anything raised during public comment um, or in the city staff comments? Uh, yes, I would like to speak to the remark concerning moving the structure to the rear of the lot. Since the structure is not, does not have integrity of the siding framing and so on down to the ground, it has concrete uh, lower walls, concrete floor. It makes it impossible to take that front section and move it to the rear of the lot. Uh, I would be moving more or less half of the first floor walls and the superstructure above it, which is a bedroom and a bathroom, uh, moving it to the back of the lot and then rebuilding a third of uh, the lower structure, the concrete floor and the uh, lower walls back up again to support what's above it. Um, I do some carpentry and I'm licensed under the state, not as a general contractor, but as a handyman. And, uh, and I've worked on houses and so on. I once owned a home on 6 Franklin Street that I owned for 30 years. Uh, there's just no redeeming quality to try to move the structure to the rear of the lot. Uh, the young lady who spoke concerning uh, losing the structure because of the uh, historic value of that older part uh, is a good comment. If there were some way to keep this little structure there and you allow me to build a new home in the front, I'd be glad to try and rehab this into something that could be usable. I don't know what it would be unless it would be like a tiny workshop or something behind the main house. But uh, I just find that has a lot of problems trying to figure out how I would do something to make it of value. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, let's move on to board discussion and a vote on this matter.
Uh, all right, this is Julia, and I'm pretty much aligned with staff on this. Um, you know, it's kind of borderline for me, but I feel like it, it doesn't really have a lot to tell us about our city's history, this particular structure, and it's an aberration, and that it was joined with its, you know, its primary residence which is now separated from, from it by a property line. It's a distinct property, which calls for a, a house toward the street. So in my mind, it, I just don't, don't see a compelling reason to kind of handicap the property by preserving what's left of it. Um, this is Bill. I would uh, say that I also uh, agree with staff's comments and recommendation. Um, yeah, it does appear that the building has been altered um, probably a number of times in its life um, to the point where it's only obvious to discern that one addition area, but I believe staff's suspicion about the siding is probably correct, and it appears there have been other alterations, potentially even structural alterations to the building over time. So, um, plus the um, form is not um, typical of a garage form, which I do believe does have um, historic value and merit if, if indeed it was one of those original garage forms. And also I do believe um, the potential construction of a new home to establish uh, the rhythm of the neighborhood is, is a plus as well. Um, or you're on mute. Sorry, I said, um, I don't have anything to add. I am, uh, I think reluctantly in agreement with staff, it would be nice uh, to preserve uh, the sm these small buildings when they have significant value. But I think the possibility of successfully relocating this building uh, on the lot and reusing it uh, is probably not terribly practical. So I am reluctantly in agreement with staff. Glenn Gardner, um, I'll admit that Glenn, you're breaking with it a bit um, because um, I'm sorry, if I don't have a good connection. I'll just have to have to pull out of the meeting. We can hear Let, you now. I'll I'll just okay if. If my connection fails, I'll just have to pull out of the meeting. Um, but I, I was uh, attempting to say that I, I do lament the fact that the board doesn't have any purview over, over the scale and the mass of what goes back on the site. But I hope that the applicant is thoughtful as to um, being cohesive with the streetscape and um, I do think there is a world in which you could design the older part of this building uh, as the back appendage of a new home, but um, at that point it would be hidden from from pub the public realm, and um, I think it just would present a bit of a challenge. But I I am very conscious of the fact that we shouldn't just, uh, in my mind, permit demolition without carefully thinking it through. Thanks, Glenn. I don't have anything to add, and I'm in line with staff comments. We have a motion. Yeah, and I, I'll just throw out there that it's fortunate that this is in an X zone, so it really can kind of retain the same finished floor height and scale of the neighboring properties. But obviously, that's not really in our purview. Um, so I'll make a motion for final approval of demolition. We have a motion for final approval. Is there a second? This is Bill, I'll second. Thank you, Bill. All right, we'll put it to a vote. 
Uh, Glenn? Yay in favor. Gilmore? Yay in favor. Julia? Yay in favor. Bill? Yay in favor. Chair votes with the majority and the motion passes unanimously. Moving on to agenda item number two, 66 Queen Street. Kim, if you would start us off with an introduction. Thank you, Lindsay. 66 Church Street is requesting final approval for, for Piazza enclosure at rear. The building is a category three and in the Charlestown neighborhood. It was built in 1784 and in the old historic district. For a little bit of context and to orient you with the project, uh, here's an aerial view. You can see it's on the east side of the street. Here's um, a Google image of the existing site and the piazza in question. And uh, this is looking south and north. Here's the side of the house, the north side. And if the applicant wants to take it from here, Mr. Liberatos, you have the floor. Um, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Well, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Christopher Liberatus. I'm an architect representing Mr. and Mrs. Stanley Porter, the new owners of this house at 66 Church Street. Um, could we have picture two up, please? Picture number two? Thanks. Um, I'm going to be asking for approval to allow the Porters to glaze in one Piazza Bay on the second floor in the rear behind the main corner of this house. But first I'd like to say that I believe that porches are one of the defining features of the historic district. And in general, I'm opposed to their being enclosed indiscriminately. I've even turned down jobs that have asked me to do so. However, I'm not absolutely opposed to it when it's done well, which is to say easily reversible for the future and nicely detailed and proportioned for the present. Obviously the city isn't opposed to it absolutely either. Otherwise staff wouldn't have accepted this application. Still, this is the first time I've ever made an application to enclose even a single Piazza Bay. So I'll explain the reasons behind my making an exception in this case. Could we have a uh, picture four, please? Picture number four. Uh, not that one. It's, um, it's labeled number four. It shows the existing conditions in the rear. Uh, that will work. Uh, if we could have more of those images, that'd be great. Can everyone see that? Mm -hmm. The picture? Okay, so. My uh, apologies. That's all right, thank you. Um, like so many people, the porters would like to have somewhere to eat that isn't the formal dining room. Um, if you look at the second floor plan, you'll see that the current kitchen is standing room only. And in the two photographs, um, the kitchen is behind the cantilevered bay window, that, that bank of windows, um, which was designed by Randolph Martz as part of the renovation of this house in 2005. At first, the porters asked about replacing this new cantilevered bay with a larger one to make the kitchen itself larger. Um, there's no policy that I'm aware of that would preclude them from doing that from tearing off that bay and building a larger one. But I talked them out of it because that Ken Levered Bay is really great. It's beautiful. And I don't believe that there'd be a way to add a larger Ken Lever and have it be done as nicely as that one. Um, secondly, if you look back at the floor plans, the room immediately behind the kitchen to the east in the former dependency, which could be used as dining, is unfortunately up a flight of steps, which for older people is impractical. Um, could we have picture three up, please? Um, that's it. Um, thirdly, the bay that we are proposing to be enclosed used to be enclosed for longer than it has been opened, as it was only opened in the recent renovation by Mr. Martz. Um, 
I believe that enclosing this one inset bay with traditional glazing might very well have been part of that original 2005 renovation had it been requested by the owners at that time. And I believe had Mr. March proposed this bay to be enclosed then and in this manner, it would have been approved. Um, could we go back to the uh, picture five, please, of the existing conditions back there? Thanks. Fourthly, uh, I used to work for Mr. Martz and am familiar with his detailing, which is traditional Charleston detailing. And I would ensure that the details of this new enclosure would harmonize with those of the rest of the house. Fifthly, as I said at the outset, this bay is on the second floor of the piazza and around the rear corner of the main house. And even though it would be well detailed, it's hardly, it would be hardly visible from the street. And then finally, owning a historic house like this is expensive and the new owners understand that they will have become essentially caretakers of this important building. And I believe that allowing this minor and easily reversible alteration would make this house more livable for them and that it should be allowed. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Liberato. Do we have any um, questions from the board? Um, Am I mistaken, are, are there not really any existing plans or existing elevations of the existing condition? They're just proposed really, right? I think we well, can figure out what's going on, but- um, No, the, if you look at the street elevation, there's, not, there's no proposed change to that elevation. Right, but the elevations that do change, we don't have the existing yes. versions of those. Do you? Yes, you do. If you look at these existing south elevation, there's no proposed changes, you see there. We're, we would rebuild the bank of French doors that exist exactly as they are, but, uh, but bringing them forward. And so the elevation doesn't change. The only elevation that changes is the rear elevation, which I've got drawn both existing and proposed on the last page. So you're basically just replicating the wall that's there now and pulling it out on the, toward the south? It's essentially uh, a bank of French doors. There's no wall at all, but, but yeah, we would be, replicating that uh, and bringing and it- And retaining the existing one as well. That was your name? Yes. But I guess the east elevation would have a difference, right? And we just don't have that existing. Yes, it's uh, page three. three. Gotcha. So okay. the top left uh, is existing and the top right would be the proposed. Okay, there's just no existing plan, but Okay, that's fine, I got it. Thank you. Can, can you go back to the other well. drawing sheet? Thank you. Are there any other board questions at this time? That's just one more. Are you, um, you're cutting into the balustrade at the east elevation, correct? To add to your pilaster? Uh, yes, there'd be a few balusters taken out, but as you can see, those that's a new railing from the recent renovation, but, but the answer is yes. Any other board comment? I mean, excuse me, board question. All right, we'll move on to public comment. Kim, let's see. All right, we have a position statement from the Preservation Society of Charleston. Kim, I'm going to assume that I'll read all of these for this meeting, correct? Yes, Lindsay, thank you. For 66 Church Street, dear board members, the, Pre the Preservation Society is generally not supportive of Piazza infill in accordance with the BAR policy statement on Piazza enclosures that emphasizes the importance of preserving this important and characteristic feature of Charleston's vernacular architectural. Based on the information provided in this application, it is difficult to understand the existing condition of the area to be impacted by the proposed Piazza enclosure. This is a relatively early single house in the sensitive historic district and we feel clearer documentation is needed to adequately consider this request. 
Thank you for considering our position in this matter. Sincerely, Aaron Minigan. Do we have anyone speaking? Kim? We do, we have April Wood. April, you have the floor whenever you're ready. April Wood is Dark Charleston Foundation. HCF has reviewed the application for a piazza enclosure at the rear of 66 Church Street. As stated in the BAR policy statement on piazza enclosures, Charleston piazzas are a building feature unique to and closely identified with the architectural history and urban character of the city that should be preserved to retain the prevailing character of the city. To enclose piazzas and incorporate them into the interior of buildings eliminates this unique feature. While we think the applicant has made an exceptionally thoughtful application for the piazza enclosure, and the owner has been an excellent steward of this important house, we do not support the visible enclosure of the piazza at the rear of 66 Church Street. We respectfully recommend denial of this application. Thank you. Thank you, April. Kim, is there anyone else speaking from the public? We also have a letter from the Neighborhood Association. Lindsay, do you have that in front of you? I do not. Uh, okay, they, they made a comment on our innovation website. Um, Teresa Smythe, the Charlestown Neighborhood Association is not supportive of this application. We stand with Preservation Society's position. So that was from the Charlestown Neighborhood Association. And that is all we have. All right. Now let's move on to city staff comments and recommendations. Um, we have just a couple, um, some comments first. The recent renovations have reversed some insensitive piazza modifications, and we appreciate those modifications. The loss of the historic fabric is unfortunate. We are pleased to see the retention of the balustrade. The piazza enclosure yeah, all, proposal wow. meets the approval uh, criteria I set forth in the policy statement for piazza yeah. enclosures with the following statements. The necessity for the additional area which results from the enclosure is sufficiently compelling that any alternative solution results in unacceptable alteration in historic fabric. And two, the location of the piazzas in the rear, minimal in size if staff comments are incorporated and does not alter the conceptual relationship between the house, piazza, or hyphen. So we have three, three uh, comments. Number one, the visual impact of the oblique angle we'll read is very solid and should incorporate more glass to help further differentiate the enclosure. So requesting to use door type B or similar to enlarge the light pattern or the door slab to incorporate more glass and eliminate the excess mullion. Our second comment, shift screening and new column to extend to one bay instead of two uh, and provide detail how the rear elevation will incorporate into the balustrade. So staff's recommending conceptual approval with staff comments and final review by staff. Thank you, Tim. Chris, Christopher, I can, um, I can give you a copy of those. Thank you. Mr. Liberato, did you want to respond well, to anything raised by the public or um, staff comments? Um, no, I'm not sure whether a uh, large um, uh, plate glass uh, enclosure would would help. Um, you know, the ordinance calls for additions to be harmonious with existing buildings. So I'm not sure I would come back with a proposal for um, large plate glass. I think that um, enclosing this Piazza Bay with French doors that would match all the other French doors in the house would be the best uh, solution. Uh, I think I think I'll um submit it to the board for um, review at this point. Thank you, Mr. Liberato. Let's do that. Let's open it up to board discussion and a vote. Very quickly, uh, Kim, can you point out uh, your comment about the, um, I think, engagement of or around the column? Mm -hmm one of your comments right there at the end. Um, so shift shift screening to the and new column to extend to one bay instead of two. Um, I, we'd like to see it move back to here. 
if you can see my cursor instead of here. Okay, thank you. Can I make a comment? It, no, um, it's, right now we're it's during bird board discussion. And so if anyone has a specific question for Ms. Liberatus, I would, I'd welcome um, a question to Mr. Liberatus. Uh, this is Bill. Mr. La Mr. Liberatus, do you have a comment? Uh, yes, I think if I may speak about that last uh, proposal to um, put the south bank of French doors about halfway up, that would kill this um, proposal because even one bay is quite small and it's, um, there wouldn't be enough room to use it as, a, as even a small dining room if we put the wall there. I'll ask another question. What are the dimensions of that room? I don't think we have that. Uh, the existing dimensions of that bay, of the Piazza Bay, you mean? Of the, the room that you're intending to create there. Um, it's about nine feet square, maybe nine and a half. And also, if I may, um, the relationship of the, uh, what the, what the relationship of the balustrade would be uh, to the new pilaster is shown in the detail plan number three there. Um, you can see the section going through the French doors and you can see the existing railing which would remain there. And um, you can see that the bank of French doors is tucked back uh, behind the corner of the main house. And it, it, it fits nicely with the new pilaster there and the new pilaster would be made to match the existing columns. Um, uh, okay, so Kim, a quick, quick question for you. So you're saying that in your estimation, the necessity for this room is sufficiently compelling, right? That doing anything else or not having that room would be. I, I think if the, if the wall is moved to the rear um, and not hugging the the corner here uh -huh. um, with its minimal visibility, then it is compelling. Okay. Um, and I might just throw out a slight variation on that move. Maybe if the, I guess that's the east side wall of this enclosure could pull in just far enough so that the balustrade can continue uninterrupted, that might do it for me. But I'm curious what other people think. Uh, Kim Fillmore here. Quick, quick question: Is the east elevation visible? Yeah. Uh, That's yeah. the south. Yeah. Well, we're talking about the east, Kim. Like where the balustrade That's is interrupted back. by the pilaster. Uh, is, is the back elevation visible? It it will be. Okay, that's what I, yeah, that's what I would, from looking there, it looks like it was. Okay, thank you. So, lay board member here, I, I think I'm just not understanding the plan. And Julia, maybe your questions, you can answer this. And, and maybe, uh, Mr. Liberato, this is maybe a question for you. I'm looking at sheet two of these plans. So, is that is that wall coming out in between here to sheet sheet two? Now this is where I wish we were in person. Is is this just a, a, a square rim? I'm not seeing how it the kitchen is extended. Am I on mute? That nope, I can hear you. Okay. Um no, this, it, it wouldn't really be an extension of the kitchen. It would be uh, a small dining room for them, an informal dining room. Okay. Off the kitchen. Okay, from your presentation, I, I thought that this was- they, the they, had, they had originally asked uh, of me if we could make the kitchen larger, but I just am not 
willing to propose tearing off that bay window and cantilevering out even more. And even if, if we were to do that, that would essentially be burying this, the Piazza Bay that we're talking about in further um, light. The other thing about um, moving the east wall in um, is that that would require a, a corner, a glazed, you know, a, a sort of uh, staunchen at the corner that wouldn't be touching any of the colonnade. And to me, this is this is the traditional way of infilling um, columns is to have the glazing abut a column or a pilaster. I would agree if it was an original column, but this is set back from that and distinct, which is why in, in my estimation, it seems like that would be okay. And it would sort of address staff's concern about the visibility a little bit and, um, and it would allow the balustrade to stay intact. But curious again, what other board members think? Um, this is Bill. I, um, I would say that um, I do um, agree with the uh, comments of staff and I believe the recommendation of staff. Um, I guess the, 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 I, and I appreciate uh, Kim, you making that point clear about um, your comment about potentially um, pulling the uh, extension back uh, towards the kitchen. Um, I think that's a that's a strong comment. Um, yeah, I, it, I guess in seeing that and hearing that comment from staff, um, it, it really is minimizing the um, enclosure to the point of where it's not even fully encompassing one bay um, proper. Uh, so in that instance, I could I believe I could um, I could support staff's recommendation, um, but in this extent, I believe it's a just a, that bit more extensive. Um, I believe the difference would be uh, would be pretty great if it was pulled back. Just again, those uh, couple of feet as staff had suggested. Glenn Gardner, um, I, I feel like a lot of times this would be a non-starter, but the applicant has definitely, I think, put a good foot forward uh, trying to show what they're capable of doing. Um, in my mind, there is some finesse that is needed. Um, and I think there's a question of, of the method and sort of how far you could or could not pull it back to even make this worth doing. Um, I think I think that's sort of a discussion point that we all have to, to to be set on to give them a very clear directive as to whether they should pursue this or not. No more here. I uh, want to follow up with Glenn's uh, uh, comment. That is that Mr. Liberata stated that if he had to pull that back very much, I think that it it doesn't make it practical, and so. Um, uh, Kim, I uh, can you give us a little guidance into into uh, sort of the dimensions of that comment about pulling it back? Are we talking about pulling it back six inches? Are we talking about pulling it back a foot or or half the distance? What were you? Well, if there's some way that they can. Mr. Liberatos can um, adjust this. Right now, the logical place for me to break this is right here. Um, but if there's some way he can adjust it to maybe where it's, this looks like 18 inches or so. Okay, yes, okay. Two, two feet from the corner, from, from this photo, I see from this gutter, leader downspout, I see six of the um, glass bank windows. And that to me lands, sorry, which way am I going? One, two, three, four, five, six. I can see to here. 
So if he pulls it in that much, I, I, f I feel that the policy statements are upheld um, and there's, there's no real loss of relation from the main house to the hyphen or kitchen house. What are the total dimensions of that room again? Right now, as, as proposed, what are the dimensions? Nine by nine, according to the applicant. Nine by nine. So if it came back two feet, it would be seven by nine. It becomes a small space. And the other the other question at hand is how close to that door, the existing door, uh, does it get? And then my other question, and of course it's completely out of our purview, but from a planning standpoint, if I, if I were told, for example, to pull the wall back in, a couple of feet, I'd look at that existing French door wall and that counter and maybe taking those out and you have the extension of a pretty good size room there. I think he wants to keep it reversible, which I admire. Um, and the only thing that, that bothers me is that introduction of a de facto new column that breaks the balustrade. That doesn't make sense to me, but, but um. Maybe if he just moves that wall to the north a foot, maybe that's a fine compromise. And he can adjust the fenestration on the east side to and or south side as needed. May I speak? I don't think so. Unless there's a question asked of you, Julia, did you have um, a, a question for Mr. Liberato? I really didn't, but um, but I'll ask if he wants to say something. Would you like to say something? Uh, well, the issue about moving that corner up a foot even, um, uh, I'm not sure that would work because by treating it as a pilaster, that column and that pilaster become a pair. If we put an arbitrary foot or a foot and a half or two feet between that pilaster and the column, it no longer looks as a, like a pair. Um, it looks like a sort of arbitrarily placed plaster. Whereas if you put the plaster just next to a column, it looks like it's done on purpose. The other I result- I just pulled it in past the balustrade, like I suggested, because I see that detail a lot downtown where it, it, the enclosure doesn't align exactly with the column. So they pull it in and just create a new corner and leave the balustrade alone. Um, all right. Uh, Does anybody have an idea of the motion? Um, Julia, it's Glenn. I, I'm just going to make one more quick comment. I, I think this is a case where if 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 a if a motion does move forward and there there is a a, a an acceptable distance, you know, kind of reached with with the staff comment, this might be a very easy blue foam board mock up on site for people to look at to to see how. Um, you know, how it moves forward to final, if that might be a reasonable suggestion with regard to a mock-up. You want to make a motion to that effect? I, I think you were headed toward one. You do? Um, no more here. Um, I'll just interject before the motion is made that it, even though I think that this is about as sensitively done in, in the existing plan to, to achieve the existing plan, uh, perhaps as you can hope for, maybe except for the double column, I think there would be a better way to treat that and leave, maybe perhaps leave that balustrade uh, totally intact and exterior. Um, except for that, I, I think this is about as sensitively done as you could hope for. However, it's still a porch enclosure. And on a lot of these single houses, these antebellum single houses, of course, that turn in the piazza to the back and then landing on what today we might call a mudroom is a common feature. And um, I think as drawn, I can't, I would not support this, even though I think it is a about as good an enclosure under these circumstances as you could hope to achieve. It still is a porch enclosure, and 
I think um, I lean heavily towards not supporting porch enclosures, particularly on, on really prominent houses like this. Um, well, I'm just gonna throw a motion out there and see what happens. Um, uh, how about a motion for conceptual approval for this piazza enclosure with board conditions that the east wall and pilaster be disengaged from the balustrade and that the south wall of the enclosure be shifted north approximately one foot. Can you repeat that last board condition that or the second board condition? So I've got the east wall and the pilaster be disengaged from the balustrade and that the south wall be shifted north approximately a foot. And I think that leaves some negotiation room for staff. Okay. So and I would say final review by staff if that motion applies. Okay, so I've got a motion on the floor for conceptual approval with um, board condition that the east wall and the pilaster be disengaged from the balustrade and the south wall be shifted north approximately one foot uh, with staff comments and final review by staff. Is that right, Julia, so staff comments in addition to the two board comments? Um, no, I think you can just leave it just with the board comments. Or it's, okay, board comment and final review by staff. Kim, did you get that? Yes, ma'am, thank you. All right, do I have a second to Julia's motion? No second. Do we have any further board discussion then? Um, this is Bill. I would say I'm good with everything in that motion except potentially where that um, south wall shifts northward. Um, I believe there is some merit in staff's comment about the establishment of a bay rhythm that's similar to the um, projecting bay adjacent. And I believe that was why the um, distance was not set, but it's, I think it's to say um, that um, shift screening at new column and, uh, and new column to extend to one bay instead of two. And I do believe there's merit in that comment. So that's, that was really the only difference between my opinion and, and, and your motion. Okay, Bill, do you want to put a revised motion on the floor? I'll just say that I am a little sensitive to the applicant's plea for a for a room that's big enough for a table. I think if you if you halved the length of it from north to south, it would be pretty much impossible. And I don't think that east elevation for is really visible to the public. But I'm happy to hear another motion. Bring it on. All right, um, this is Bill. I'll make a motion um, for conceptual approval with staff's comments and an additional board comment that the um, east wall be disengaged from the balustrade. Um, is that the, is there another comment, Julie? I'm sorry. That was the main one I keyed in on. Yeah, I guess you just overrode my comment about moving the wall north and first trying to stipulate that it be moved further north. So, yeah, you're good. Okay, yes. That is that is my motion. And um, final review by staff. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor for conceptual approval with staff comments 
and a board condition that the east wall and the pilaster be disengaged from the balustrade and final review by staff. Yes. All right. Do we have a second? No second. Um, let's continue discussion. Glenn Gardner, I'll just add a few, two, two comments of things that I'm sort of looking for. Um, I think we need a dimension plan. Um, I know there's a scale on the submittal, but I, th I think we need dimension showing what the, what the proposal um, is, uh, is showing the exact distance of the, the new proposed enclosure and um, I'm not so certain about the final review. I just think that um, we cannot take a piazza enclosure lightly. And I know that we're not, but I, I think we just are, are, have to be very careful setting precedent um, if we're looking at going against our board policy for piazza enclosure. May I speak? Uh, no, not at this time. Hey, Glenn, can we talk about the way in which it goes um, against our our policy statement? I, I'm just looking at it and um, and I'll ask Kim if I'm mistaken, but but generally we have followed a policy statement disallowing piazza enclosures across the board. So they have to meet certain criteria. There are two criteria in particular. Um, Can I jump in here? So I see the two criteria, the, necess the necessity for the additional area. And I think that's what's really getting me here is the necessity of it. Um, I, when I originally listened to this and I, and I realized I viewed the plans wrong, um, I thought that it was somehow going to be an extension of the, the kitchen and, it, and it, I'm just not seeing the necessity of this room here. And especially with the comments to to shift the that to that wall north and to make the room even smaller and and it it's just going to be for the purpose of fitting a table. Um, so the, the two requirements are the necessity for the additional area and the location of the piazza enclosure shall be to the rear and minimal in size and not alter the conceptual relationship. I think it's minimal and I, I in size I, I think it. I think it's well done. Um, I think it's the necessity that is, is getting me here. Uh, Phil Murphy, I don't, I don't disagree with that. And I think perhaps uh, there could be a way to do this where it would be so minimally um, visible that it, it might sort of meet the requirements I think that we try to stick with um, what uh, um, I think maybe it was Glenn or, or Bill that, you know, the existing uh, uh, French door enclosure might be shifted slightly and provide just enough space for a very small um, uh, kitchen table. Um, and I also know that, that I. Uh, that there are others, it looks like there are other spaces in the floor plan that could provide um, the necessary extra square footage as well. And so uh, I don't disagree with Lindsay that I think it's the, uh, the necessity part of this that I'm struggling with, as well as the, the fact that we 
tend to be very cautious about setting precedents on things like porch enclosures. And I think that, that it's important uh, that we maintain that consistency. Bill Moore, I, 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 I hear everything you're saying and I think you're fairly well on target. And I just, I'll underscore you know, my, my earlier comment that if, it, if I didn't think that it had been thoughtfully you know, brought to us, I, I think it would have been a non-starter. I mean, clearly they've, they, they have been carefully thinking this through and, and obviously trying to detail it well. So um, I, I, I wanna make sure the applicant knows that I, um, I think they're doing about as good of a job as they can to ask for something that generally is prohibited. Right, yes, I agree completely with, with what you said, Glenn. Um, I think we, we need to move on to some kind of a motion. Um, I would make a motion um, for deferral, for restudy um, of the size of the porch enclosure and its visibility. We have a motion on the floor for um, deferral for restudy of the porch enclosure, for the size of the porch enclosure and visibility. Do I have a second? Um, Madam Chair, may I ask for a clarification? Um, when you say the sight line, are you talking about providing a sight line study, Fillmore? Yes, or just more thorough drawings with, uh, with perhaps a different arrangement, which, um, which didn't pull, which didn't enclose basically uh, the turn in the porch. I think you could get away with enclosing a little bit of the north side of that, or rearranging it so that so that the and the the current north wall of the porch is is pulled um, south a little bit. Um, but I think simply enclosing that section of the porch is, I mean, I, uh, I wouldn't support it. And to reiterate what's been said over and over again, in spite of the fact that I think this is a very uh, sensitive attempt at that, um, I think it's we, a huge number of those spaces over the years have been enclosed. And that turn back uh, is, is an original feature on a lot of, of big single houses. And I think it's a shame to lose it. And uh -huh. even though it's very sensitive, I, I think that that turn back is important to, to maintain. So more other question on that front. Don't you think that the existing location of the, the glass wall enclosure there is the original location of the hyphen wall, which probably aligns with the floor above it? Yes. Yeah, that's why I'm that's why I'm reluctant to ask him to move that because I think he's trying to make this reversible. I think that's very possible. I'm you know I just looks like it lines up with the floor above, and okay. I would yeah, tend that's... to suspect it's original. Yeah, I think that's probably true. That wall, not that not the way it's done, but the but the wall itself is probably original. I okay. think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's original. Uh, uh, I imagine it probably is, yes. So. Yeah, I guess the point of, of sort of trying to figure out the plan for the applicant, I it's really not something we need to be doing, but, um, you know, in, in what I mentioned before about potentially removing that existing French door wall system that was added in 2005 and there's a counter adjacent to it that's probably added at the same time. I'm not suggesting removing that bit of wall there between the kitchen island, um, that little corner there. Um, I was suggesting leaving all that and any headers in place as well. So I was just mainly talking about potentially removing the 2005 additional um, material and also there would be some leveling to this floor that's going to have to happen anyway. So um, the point of demarcation is going to be sort of 
taken away at some point anyway. So the main thing I'm talking about potentially removing would be those two 2005 um, features, which would appear to open up that space um, and therefore allowing this proposed uh, addition wall to move northward. Um, and I believe the sight line study may be of merit, um, Phil Moore, um, because I think what we're gonna see as we see in that first original photograph that was shown, um, if there is air seen between that column and maybe not even seeing the corner of this glass um, enclosure or uh, minimal uh, visibility of that glass enclosure, but seeing a lot of air there at that return, that, that's going to um, uh, hopefully um, address your, your point, Phil, more about having a uh, semblance of a return remain. So um, if it's uh, a motion for deferral pending a sideline study and more refined drawings, I think I can support that. I just wanted to clarify where I would be coming from and what I would be looking for in that, in that statement. Um, but I, I, I can see uh, supporting that motion. I'm going to ask the applicant just to confirm or clarify whether the existing wall that encloses the hyphen is in the original hyphen location and aligns with the third floor wall above. That's correct. In fact, the, the cantilevered bay, if you look at this for second floor plan there, that's, that's projecting forward from that old wall line which does, as, as you rightly say, align with the existing bank of French doors. But I would like to add that the, the French doors that I've designed for the enclosure of this bay, it, it just so happens that they all work out to have the exact same proportions as the existing French doors. And if we start moving one wall in an arbitrary amount and another wall in another arbitrary amount, I'm worried that the proportions of the French doors are going to reflect that arbitrary dimension rather than the, the existing proportions of the, um, of, the, of the existing glazing. Um, so Bill, did you make a um, new motion for deferral pending a sight line study and more defined drawing? No, I did not. I was simply clarifying um, what Fillmore had mentioned, which was um, more refined drawings. I believe Fillmore, you mentioned more refined drawings. And then I don't know if you mentioned the sight line study. Is that, was that your intent? I, d I, did, I did not. I mean, I that might be helpful. Um, I was shooting at a motion for deferral rather than outright denial, which tends to put the brakes on harder than a, uh, a deferral. Um, you know, I, I think there might be a way to do this that uh, might gain more board support and I was just trying to move in, in that direction. Um, we're going to have, at some point, we're going to have to make a motion to either, you know, accept, defer, or deny this. And so, um, I, my motion, which was the second one, was to accept it with the staff's conditions. And I believe that actually staff's comment does address the point that the applicant just made about the rhythm of that adjacent bay. And staff had mentioned maybe one bay. Um, rhythm to that. So um, I'm not going to restate my motion, but I do believe that staff's weighing of the, the scenario was, was valuable. And um, that's why I was inclined to go with that. And as a point of order, I think we do have a motion on the floor at the moment. I think so more if it's, if it's my motion, I would draw it. Okay. Do we have a Fillmore's motion has been withdrawn. Do we have a new motion on the floor? All right, this is Bill. I'll make a motion for a deferral uh, pending a sight line study to be provided by the applicant and also detailed drawings. Uh, and also um, I would make a, um, uh, the applicant aware of um, uh, a 
board condition that the um, east wall be disengaged from the balustrade and any new proposals. Okay, we have a motion on the floor for deferral pending a site line study from the applicant and received a more defined drawings and a board comment that the east wall be disengaged from the balustrade. Did I properly state that, Bill? I'll second that. Yeah. Thank you, Julia. I'll now put it to a vote. Glenn? Yay, in favor. Fillmore? Yay, in favor. Bill? Yay, in favor. Julia? Yay, in favor. Chair votes with the majority and the motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Liberato. Thank you. Moving to agenda item number three, 48 Bull Street. Kim, if you'll start us out with an introduction. I will, thank you. Forty-eight Bowl Street is requesting conceptual approval for four new dependency buildings and a raised terrace. The building is a Category Three in the Harleston Village and built in 1848 and in the old historic district. Here's an aerial image just for a little bit of context. It's on the north side of Bowl Street between Pitt and Smith, just south of Calhoun. Here's another image just showing the visibility sight lines between the driveways on both. Pitt and Smith uh, into the lot, and then um, the, the parking lot that fronts Calhoun. Here's um, the parking lot from Calhoun Street, and you can see the white and yellow building in the back is um, the building in question, 48 Bowl. This property has some history. Um, in 2007, Randolph Marks, um, had this proposal approved for four detached units. And here's the, um, the previous site section with those four buildings. And then behind that, you can see the existing buildings. I think this is probably a Smith. Here's the elevation of one of those houses. And this is, um, a plan of the pump house necessary for the property that's in the rear, um, the back right side of the property. And here are um, some, some details on that pump house building. And then elevation, uh, arch, anything like that. Um, but again, as I said, this project has some history. So there were five iterations submitted um, this being number five, 2006. And I'm just gonna quickly show you all of these because um, in those years, this was a, a big, um, this was a contentious project. And it had a lot of review time, a lot of um, board time and staff time. Um, so this was the, the, the one that almost made it through. <laughs> <laughs> uh, reduced to one and a half stories. Here's another iteration. Um, the third iteration. The second iteration. And the first um, shows three different um, uh, main massings with five units. townhouses here. With that, if our applicant, uh, Robbie Marty, is ready, you have the floor, Robbie, whenever you, you're ready. Hey, this is Robbie. Can y'all hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. All right. So this, um, as as Kim said, this, this property has a, um, it has a lot of history through the um, through the BAR and then also just within sort of the city, 
So the, the existing two-story masonry building, as was said, is, was constructed sometime between 1786 and 1808. And it is situated on three quarters of an acre, which is a really large lot for this neighborhood. Um, in the beginning of the Second World War, the house was parceled into several apartments. And then an additional apartment building was constructed on the back of the lot. Um, Kim, can you page to, um, to the second um, image on the PDF? There, okay, so, so this is, this is a, the survey of the existing house and you can sort of see it's, it's on sort of the, the front half of the, the property. And then if you go to the next screen, this is a, an older survey. It's actually turned around the other direction, but you can see on the bottom right hand of the screen, there was a building that, um, and that was the apartment building that was added sometime after the second world war. Um, the apartment building was demolished in the, the early 2000s and the existing building was, has been reconfigured and, and renovated the interior many times, and it is currently a duplex. So sometime around the same time that the apartment building was, was removed, the, um, the owners of the building agreed to enter into a conservation easement with the city, and that limited the development on the rear portion of the property to five residential units, which is what, um, as Kim was talking about the, the different reiterations that, that happened um, about 15 years ago, it stipulates the setback from the street and that the building height be under the existing building height. And um, as I said, we're limited to five residential units. I think that it is worthy to note that if, and, and I know that we're not dealing with zoning, but but I think that we're, when we talk about height, scale, and mass on this particular piece of property, that in traditional zoning regulations, this, a lot this size would be allowed to have 14 units on it. And so five units is significantly under what the, um, what the city of Charleston zoning allows. So, all right, Kim, if you'll just sort of, um, will you just page through so this is the, um, this is, these are the Sanborn maps. I've circled the building. You can kind of see the, the, um, the circa 1902 and then to the right of it, 1944, that shows the apartment building. Then if you'll go to the next one. Then again, this is the existing site, pla site plan, but I, I did um, put a fill in to just show where that, that building was and sort of the this, this scale of it. And if you'll go to the next, um, these are um, these are Google Earth maps. This is what I believe this photograph on the bottom left was in the BAR file, which makes me think that it may have been, it may be the apartment building that was there, although there is an apartment building that is exactly like it that is adjacent to the property. So it's hard to say whether or not this was the, the building, but I have a feeling just the size and the shape, it probably looked a lot like that. And then on the top right, you can see there's a, a Google map image from 1999 that shows the apartment building. All right, next page. This is the, um, this is the, the view from Bull Street of the existing two-story masonry building with a single store, story um, porch. And then the next few, if you can just sort of go through those, Kim, this shows an addition that was done in, in 2000, I believe six or seven um, to the building. And then these are the views from sort of the driveway um, into the property and out of, and then this is the lot in the back. Currently it's a gravel lot and it's surrounded by an eight foot wooden fence. This is the Google image of the, um, the site with the properties, surrounding properties mapped. And again, you can just see sort of significantly how much bigger this lot is than the, you know, the typical surrounding property. You'll go to the next image. So this gets, it brings us to what our, um, our proposal is. 
So the um, what we are asking for in short is a um, is a garage building a coach house with an apartment above it, and then three single family townhouse units um, beyond that. Then there is a raised terrace that connects the existing addition to the new coach house. If you'll go to the next, well, actually right here, if you'll flip back just very quickly, um, as part of the preservation setback, the, um, the conservation easement stipulates that the, the new buildings not be closer to Bull Street than 170 feet. And you can kind of see that on the bottom of the site plan. So where that line is, falls in about the middle of the terrace. So we have set the buildings actually even further back from the historic house, kind of delineating the difference um, in this. And, and I'd also like to just note, um, we had a, a great deal of discussion with, um, with Historic Charleston, the Preservation Society, the neighborhood, and also the city of Charleston in, in kind of working on, on these buildings. So, um, well, this is the first time we've formally been before your board. We have had um, a good bit of discussion. All right, so next slide. So this is just a um, the floor plan of the garage building in the terrace. And you can kind of see that you enter the garage on the north side. This, um, the, the current owners of this property have um, have young boys. And so they are interested in um, and I know the program isn't that doesn't affect the architecture, but they're interested in having as much sort of outdoor and recreational space for their for their boys as possible. And so that is one of the things that um, that is is sort of driving this program for them a little bit. So you can go to the next screen. The um, the apartment over the garage is a two bedroom. And um, is a sort of situated it's north to south. And there's kind of like a little bit of a loggia roof that connects the, um, the garage to the, the historic building. And then if you'll go to the next page, this is the, um, oops. It's, we're proposing just simple standing seam metal roofs, similar to what is on the historic building. If you'll go to the next, these are the floor plans of the townhouses. The townhouses are two stories. They're three and three bedrooms, three and a half baths. They all have their own entry and then a screened porch on each one of them. Um, the next will be just shows the floor plan of the second floor. And if you'll go to the next page. So you can just kind of see the bedroom plan. And then the next is the roof plan that shows sort of the connecting of the, um, of the roofs. And then on to these, the next views, this is what the view would be from Bull Street. So our, our goal here was, was to kind of keep in, in a typical preservation sight line to have the, the new buildings sort of situated fully behind the existing building, which is a little bit different from the original proposals that were, um, you know, that, that kind of went through all of the, the board stuff many years ago. So, so, um, so from this sight line, you have you, the buildings are, they will be visible from the right and the left simply because of the size of the property, but they will be minimally visible. You can go to the next screen. So this begins to show the sketch renderings of what, um, of what the sight lines would be both down the driveway side and then also on the west side of the property. Um, there are also an awful lot of trees. This is a really, really beautiful lot on, on the front part of the property. Then the next slide um, begins to show what the, um, what the building looks like. So this is the, um, the raised terrace with the loggia roof and then the, the coach house garage and apartment above, then the, um, the apartment buildings beyond. And you will go to the next screen, Kim. These show the townhouse units. You know, we just worked a lot on proportion and sort of pushing and pulling the buildings with the, to, um, to minimize the footprint and, um, and the scale. One of the things that, um, 
that I've also worked on was the the existing building is pretty simple. It's it's you know masonry and double hung windows with a standing seam metal roof, and it seemed appropriate to keep that same kind of language of just simple stucco, standing seam roof, um, very clean masonry details, and um, the coach house will have double hung windows, and then we have casement windows in the townhouse units. Um, you, can, Marie, you got about a minute left. Okay. I am just about done. So you can go to the next slide. This shows the views from the, um, from the west side, which would be sort of the backyards of the, um, of the units. And then if you'll go to the next screen shows the, this is, um, and I think this is a really, really important view. So this is the driveway side showing our eave heights, the building heights, and the height, and how all of this is is lower and more diminutive than the um, than the existing structure. If you'll flip one more, it'll show the back side. So this is the um, this is the west side of, of the units, and again, just sort of showing how the eaves drop down. And Kim, if you just for the last minute, if you want to just kind of flip through the the larger elevations, this is the the north, and then again, the east of the townhouses from the west side. And then this is how they connect to each other just um, from the south elevation of the townhouse and connecting to the coach house. And then there should just be, yeah, the, this is the coach house. And again, showing the heights of, um, and the, the relationship of the eave to the existing building. And then, I think there's like one or two more. Yeah. And this is the this is the view through kind of the raised terrace of the um, the north sorry of the coach house. And that is all. Thank you, Miss Marty. Do my fellow board members have any questions for Miss Marty at this time? Um, I have a couple quick ones. Um. Can you ex kind of just explain kind of why the new houses are elevated so much? It seems like with the flood zone, they would only need to go up like three feet, but just if you could articulate that for me. So the, um, the townhouses are the, and so Kim, will you flip to the, um, one of the sketch views sort of looking down the driveway? Yeah, this is perfect. Actually go, back the one that you just had it on was good there. So so the the height of the entry porch at the um, at each townhouse that is the required elevation the reflecting the new flood zone elevation with the the 2 foot freeboard that's required by the city. And then we in order to just not have such a car heavy um, site we did add a small garage under each of the townhouse units and it's only really in the front portion of, of the garage. So it creates almost um, a little bit of a story and a half feel to this, that, that front sort of protruding part of the townhouse units. And then um, the first floor of the coach house seems really tall. How was the ceiling height there? The ceiling height in the coach house is, is 12 feet. And again, that reflects the, the desire of the, the homeowner to, um, to sort of maximize the recreation ability um, with, with his kids. We had, I think that you all saw the, the program of the, the last application that we came through. What they really wanted to do was to be able to have almost like a basketball court feel on the inside, just so they could, um, you know, have a place for their kids to go as often as possible. We've reduced that down to 12 feet, but are just, we're trying to keep it to a, um, you know, to keep with the, their, their program. And then one last thing, the terrace, why, why is it raised so much? I mean, you have to walk down then to get into the coach house. Could the terrace not be lowered? So the, again, the, the idea from the, the, the client side was to to be able to have a seamless as that that would be the the terraces for them and so they wanted to just simply be able to walk out of their rear door and maybe have one or two steps down onto the terrace instead of um, several steps. 
Thank you. Any other board questions? All right, we'll move on to public comment. We have a position statement um, from the Preservation Society of Charleston. Dear board members, the Preservation Society would like to thank the applicant for reaching out and meeting with us on this project. We have seen significant improvements, particularly in the architectural direction of the project through our meetings, and appreciate the architect's response to our feedback. However, we are still struggling with the height and mass of the coach house building. The massing of the building is exacerbated by the elevated terrace connecting it to the main building, and we encourage continued study of opportunities to further reduce these elements to be more subordinate and deferential to the historic building. Thank you for considering our position in this matter. Sincerely, Aaron Minigan. We have one email. Let's see, from Amanda Griffith, agen uh, agenda item number 348 Bull Street. My family owned 47 Pitt Street in the 1980s and rehabilitated it. The yard is significantly below the level of Pitt Street and all the site drain and all the site drains to the west into the rear yard at 48 Bull Street. The water then drains towards Smith Street. How will the water be dealt with when so much of the site covered with hardscape? Signed Amanda Griffith at 107 Bull Street. We also have a letter from the Harleston Village Association dated March. 23rd, 2021, make this larger. Dear members of BARS, we reviewed the application for the construction of a range of buildings behind the historic house of 48 Bull Street and met recently on site with the project's architecture. We appreciate the efforts owner and designer have exerted to use the historic house to mask the proposed garage and residential buildings from Bull Street, as well as the parameters an existing easement within the city establishes for development of this large site. We remain concerned that their proposed height, we, we remain concerned that at their proposed height, the proposed range of buildings will loom over adjacent houses that face Smith Street. We are concerned too that the proposed rooftop balconies may be less amenable to neighborly relationships. We recommend further study of both the west facade of the condominium units and the placement and size of the rooftop balconies. We are also concerned about the potential this project has the potential to exacerbate flooding along Smith Street by setting more water into the creek now filled that wound through the center of the block now bound on the east by Pitt Street, the south by Bull Street, the west by the west by Rutledge Avenue and the north by the Calhoun Street. We understand that underground runoff storage tanks are planned for the site and encourage CCR to ensure that these tanks are large enough to contain all runoff from the site. It is important to the neighborhood that the final design for this project contain all runoff from its buildings and not shed it toward neighboring properties. Sincerely, the BAR BDA Committee of the Harleston Village Association. And I see we have a position statement here from Historic Charleston Foundation, but I believe April Wood is on the line to read that. Um, so April um, does not have a this her position statements from March, um, and, but she does not she has not signed up tonight to speak. Uh, so should I, I read this, Kim? May I make a comment? So we've coordinated with first Historic Charleston, and they did say that they don't have any comments on the the revised plan. And then secondly, the letter that you read from the Harleston Village Association is references the previous application, which we deferred. We have again regrouped with them and they also said that they had no comments for this particular, um, they actually said they appreciated that we you know, responded to their feedback about the things like the roof decks and the, the building footprint and height, and they would not have any comments on that. So um, just want to be up to date on the comments, please. Thank you. So Kim, it sounds like April is not signed up to speak. So that's right. The statement should not be in the record. Right. 
Okay. Do we have anyone? I don't see any other um, statements or letters. Do we have anyone uh, present to speak from the public? Um, no, we don't. That's all. All right. Let's move on to city staff comments and recommendations. Thank you. From the west, the townhouses appear as one large single building that overpowers the main house, making it insubordinate in height, scale, and mass. This may be more successful as a detached units, which would be contextually sensitive to the neighboring properties. The proposed carriage house is large for this building type. While the proposed carriage style doors mimic a traditional carriage house, the doors are 10 feet tall and, and the dimension from floor to floor is 14 feet, which is not permitted per zoning ordinance. Uh, the townhouse entrances should be the primary relationship to the courtyard and instead the garages have the most interface with the shared space. The entry uh, should be the primary focal point. The eight foot tall privacy stucco wall attached to the house and proposed carriage house with a raised terrace behind is not typical of Charleston Gardens, which employ courtyard walls that give delineation and are incorporated into gardens and greenery. These walls are typically a maximum of six feet tall and employ masonry piers, bricks, brick and other items of visual interest. And lastly, structures would be better reflect the context if they were detached as individual units. So the staff's recommending denial of staff comments. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Yeah, quick question, what high district is this in? Two and a half. <laughs> I'll have to double check. Just give um, me one moment. Ms. Ms. Marty, did you want to respond to any um, of the, the public comments other than your, your comments earlier that um, the Stuart Charleston Foundation statement should be withdrawn and um, and ask the other public comments and staff comments? Did you have anything to uh, clarify or respond to? The, the only thing I do want to add is that the um, the the Flooding is an issue that the, the property owners take as seriously as their neighbors do. And so we're working very carefully with the civil engineers to, to deal with the flooding and drainage. And it is our intention to, to actually improve the situation. The way that the, the site is graded now is, is haphazard at best. And um, so the goal is to at least not make it worse and really to actually improve what the current situation is. And then secondly, that the, um, again, just on the footprint of these buildings in comparison to the lot, the, they're less than a quarter of, um, well, actually that's not true. They're 27%. The lot coverage is 27%. So there still is um, a great deal of, of ground in, in the area, and um, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mark. Lindsay, to answer your question, it's in the three. The high district is a three. All right, let's open it up for board discussion and a vote. Um, Kim, can I ask a favor? Is there a... Um, Maybe. Is there a view of the... Thank you. Is there a view of the back of the historic structure with the profile of the proposed terrace? I maybe I just missed it. Be like a site section or a section through that terrace that looks at the back elevation of the historic. No, I've seen one maybe. Robbie, there, there's not there. There's the terrace sort of the section through the terrace that faces the proposed garage, but not the other way around, no. I guess I was asking so I could see how uh, much interface or interruption to the historic building there was. Um, do we have any indication of that? Can I answer that question? Yeah. Okay. Um, if if you go to you know either one of the site plans or the floor plans, the the terrace actually does not connect to the historic building at all. Um, it connects to the addition that was done um, several years ago, 
and and it sets back. So you can kind of see in the bottom um, sort of, I guess, right hand corner where the, the terrace steps down, there are windows along that that wall um, of the, the historic building at the, the basement level. And so we wanted to stay away from those just to, to give all of it a little bit of breathing room. So the, the full height of the terrace only connects to the addition and then sits back about 10 feet away, a little more than 10 feet from the, the historic building. Okay, thank you. Glenn Gardner, I may just go ahead with a comment based on where Bill was headed, I think, with that. Um, I think what I'm really struggling with, I, I'm, I don't really have any comments about the townhouses, aside from the fact that if they moved forward, I think they just have to be very, very carefully detailed. But I, I'm really struggling with the scale um, and the height of both the terrace and the garage building. I think they just... I think they're really overwhelming and um, I just, I, I'm not finding a sensitive um, connection to the, I, I'm not as worried about whether that piece of the, the back of the historic house is new or old. It's more the context to the historic building itself. And um, I, I, I'm, I'm struggling with that to a point that I'm, I'm in, I'm aligned with staff's comments on, on this. Um, this is Julia, and I just want to acknowledge um, the efforts that the applicant has clearly made to work with the preservation groups and the neighborhood association and, and kind of get them on board, most of them. Um, so that's really impressive. And, you know, I think it's perfectly reasonable for these owners to to want to add dwellings to this giant property. The, the challenge is just doing so while being sensitive to the existing structure. Um, and there are some nice things going on with this design. I really appreciate how she's kept, how she's kept everything pinched in behind the width of the existing house. Although I can honestly imagine a solution where those parameters were violated. Um, if the structures were a bit more diminutive um, and I, I kind of agree that the raised terrace is a little bit jarring um, and the height of the dependencies seems to be driven by parking alone and incongruous with the historic structure. So as much as I appreciate all the efforts that the applicants made, I am pretty much in alignment with staff. I think if parking were removed from the program um, it could all be lowered and adjusted to feel more subordinate without really affecting the square footage or other aspects of the, of the program. And yeah, that, yeah, I'm aligned with staff. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> Bill Moore Wilson here. Um, I'm in line with the comments of my fellow board members and staff and uh, particularly with the uh, I struggle with the raised terrace, and I think Julia is on, is on target that a lot of what's driving the height is the parking underneath the buildings. And uh, the, the coach house is the building right now, I think, which uh, I'm struggling most with, um, with the mass of and then the height of the, of the townhouses uh, could come down a lot, I think, if uh, that we're uh, a more sensitive parking plan than putting them under the building. Um, this is Bill. I think most everything's been said. Um, yeah, the, the key focus um, was the, I believe Glenn stated the, the raised terrace area and the coach house. Those are very, um, height of those are very, um, problematic for me and I, I agree with all the other comments made about the townhouses as well. So I believe I'm in, in alignment with the, the staff's position and the other board members. Seems like we're coming to a consensus here. Okay, um, I will make a motion for staff recommendation for denial with staff comments. 
We have a motion on the floor for denial with staff comments. Do I have a second? Bill Moore, I'll second. Thank you. Put it to a vote. Glenn? Yay in favor. Bill? Yay in favor. Julia? Yay in favor. Bill Moore? Yay in favor. Here votes with the majority and the motion passes unanimously. Thanks, y'all. Thank you, Ms. Marty. Thanks, Ms. Marty. Moving on to agenda item number four, 12 Magazine Street. Kim, yeah, give us an introduction. Thank you. 12 Magazine Street is requesting preliminary approval for repairs, modification, and expansion of rear addition. The building's a category four in the Charlestown neighborhood and was built in 1783 and in the old and historic district. I don't know if we've changed that date. Um, for some context, this is the location of the property on Magazine Street um, at the intersection of Logan. And here it is coming down Magazine Street driving west. And this is the, um, the addition in, in question. Here's the front facade. And another angle, um, that driveway is, is not part of the, the property. Just um, a closer view, another view. <laughs> um, here's the 1888 and 1902 Sanborn maps. 19, oh, 1944 and 1951 show the connected addition, one story porch. And if David Richards wants to take it from here, you have the floor. Mr. Richard, you're on mute. Mr. Richards, we cannot hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, can you see me now? No, yes, now we can. Oh, there we go, okay. All right, good, sorry about that. Um, okay, yes, it's good to see you all again. Uh, so if I can get you, Kim, to flip over probably to the photographs of the house on she'd see us too, there you go. So the last time we presented uh, to you all, I guess it was about a month ago, um, the board had some concerns that the addition that you see to the original house, I think everybody was on board with our intention to restore the original house to its original condition, as close as we can get to its original condition. But there was some concerns that the, the addition you see to that original house was uh, historic. Uh, clearly, the Sanborn map shows a structure there in 1910 that basically has the same footprint as the one you see here. Um, so the, the, we that y'all uh, assessed to defer uh, and for to, for us to get an opportunity to take Kim and Tori out there and take a look at the the building fabric that's on site. Uh, after that meeting, uh, I went. If you could flip over. A page or two, um, one, right there. I went to the, went out and opened up the walls to determine, to assess, uh, you know, what the condition uh, and of those that the framing was. As you see in every location that I that I opened up, the wall framing is new, um, probably dating from the 1980s re restoration. Um, as you see in the lower right. Uh, the, there's concrete uh, foundation and a poured in place slab on top of that. Uh, that uh, concrete slab runs throughout the entirety of the addition. As you see, I've, I've opened up, pulled back the carpet there and that, that slab does in fact cover the entire footprint uh, of the addition. So uh, clearly it seems that the, that, that, uh, the construction was was not the 1910 uh, uh, 
uh, addition, uh, even though it followed the same footprint and, and had uh, the same porches. Subsequent to me taking these photographs, we opened up the ceilings, took the ceilings out completely. And uh, Tori and Kim were able to come by and uh, take a look at what we, dis what we discovered. What we discovered was a, a sort of a uh, collection of new and old materials. Uh, the, the older materials were, were salvaged. They may have been and likely were salvaged from, the, from that structure um, that was taken down to my assessment um, in the 1980s. Uh, there was an, oddly a door, an entire door that was used for the roof deck. So there was some old material in there, but the building that exists today, the addition that exists today um, is a new addition, even though some of the materials were old. Um, and I think there's, there's no way around that when you look at the foundation and the, and the slab, there would have been no way to maintain the any original structure and, and uh, build a foundation and pour a slab underneath it. So, so but they did, um, you know, pay homage, I guess, to that earlier porch and, and they, they left the porch uh, in its, its location. Uh, if you could flip to the next slide, Kim. Um, so a couple little items there. In that porch renovation, that you, that you, the porch that exists today, the, the, the um, railings, the, the top rail, bottom rail, and uh, pickets likely, were standard components that I've specified countless times on my projects. They're just a standard Southern lumber, uh, top rail with cap and bottom rail with cap. And I know most of y'all probably use the same product uh, on your projects. And so it's common. Uh, I don't believe these railings are, are old. The, pick, the uh, column itself, um, I'm very familiar with this. I've been doing this a long time. Typically newer columns, treated wood columns, or, or yellow pine, treated with yellow pine, and they'll have knots in them. The original older were heart pine and they didn't have any knots. So I think the columns are new. I don't know for sure. They could be old, older than that. But regardless, and that, that photo below is uh, indicate a, my first house. And uh, when I bought came to Charleston back in the 80s, renovated it. And I, in fact, chamfered the columns just like is done here. So it, it wouldn't surprise me if all of this porch material is new, but I don't know for sure. Um, we, there was some discussion around the, the gate, uh, that, it, that it might be a um, Philip Simmons gate. I, I don't know, it, it may well be. I kind of, in a way, hope it is. That, that would certainly be uh, something we would uh, be proud to, to, to have. Um, the detailing in it, it looks a little less than I would expect from, from somebody of his uh, notability. Um, but regardless, it's, it's a nice gate. And I, if we, we, I guess in our proposal uh, are, are going to uh, maintain that per some of the board's comments. Um, in addition, uh, we are also gonna pay homage as, as this, the current edition does to the, nine, I guess, 1910 edition and, and try to recreate or uh, make uh, reference to that earlier uh, porch. So if I can probably just go directly to the elevations, Kim, I can get you from there to here. Okay, there you, thank you. Um, so the top uh, drawing is of course the existing uh, structure as it exists today, as we've talked about in the front, uh, portion of the building, we are intending to restore that, uh, put gutters on to protect the structure, eliminate those, those non-original foundation vents, uh, you know, and clean it up uh, as is necessary. Um, so that bottom image is the initial uh, present uh, application we made for a second floor cleaning up a lot of those, those, uh, those features of the addition that most everybody we, we spoke to, Historic Charleston Foundation Preservation Society, uh, found objectionable, found it, it, it just doesn't meet the character and quality of the, the original beautiful structure. Um, so we tried, we're, we, we need the, 
Robin, who runs Worthwhile, it needs that space to, to make this a viable retail establishment. That's her kind of her working space. And so she'll have the, most of the rest of the space for her floor area. But um, in any case, we're cleaning that up. So that's the, and in, in really make, you know, this is a sort of a standard sort of feature where you'd have a two-store piazza. I don't know of any uh, one-store piazzas that I can certainly call off hand. So, but so we sort of table that idea. And if we can go to the next slide. Mr. Richards, you've got about two minutes left. Okay, got it. Thank you. Uh, so you go to the next page, Kim, page 14. There we go. No, no, I'm sorry. You had it. I didn't realize you switched. So back on. There we go. So we were going to uh, submit the top drawing uh, elevation, uh, but when we discovered that that we can't, we couldn't get Kim over and Tori over until uh, just before the meeting. So we all elected it would be best to defer. Um, they had some comments about this proposal as well, so we took those into consideration. And, and now at this meeting, resubmitting the the, um, the proposal on the bottom there. So it's it's we got the panels below which soften the the uh, that's correct that's correct um, sort of soften the the starkness of the contrast. But obviously you can determine and assess that what is contemporary, what is new, uh, what is of our time, and what is the traditional and historic structure. So there's a nice sort of composition there, we believe that uh, uh, that that um, respects the original structure, but it also has a presence and uh, of its own. And then you see the east elevation, the same thing. So we again, we, we pay homage to the, the piazza, the 1910 piazza. Um, and on the east elevation, we clean that up. I have a pair of French doors there to the, to the rear. Robin wants to use that back patio area on occasion for a, for maybe some from guests. If you go one more elevation, we'll look back to the north side. Number 15. There we go. So, uh, I'm sorry, you had it back. Um, so that's it from the rear from the rear side. It's cleaning up that we're also stuccoing the foundation, that concrete block. I didn't mention that. There will be a, a, a fence around the, the rear east side of her property. Um, and I don't think my detail is exactly correct there because that, that should die back into the, into the roof at the top where the, the parapet should actually die back into the roof there. It actually come, so that's not exactly correct, but we can clean that up. Um, east ele the front elevation, west elevation remains as is with the exception of the gutters. Um, how much time do I have left? You are out of time. Mr. Richard. Okay, we'll leave it at that then. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Richards. Uh, my fellow board members, do you all have any questions for Mr. Rich Mr. Richards before we move on? Real quick, Kim, can you jump back to the previous page? Sure can. Thank you. Yeah, that's the one. Do you have a question, Bill? Um, I was just looking at how the um, the intersection of, well, it's not really occurring. So we're seeing the screen wall out here. So the roof plane proper is below the uh, eave of the existing house. Okay. On the south side, yeah. And it's a step in just a little bit off that corner board, it appears. Is that correct? I want to make sure I'm seeing that right. Yeah, we'll follow the footprint of the existing structure, and that should be about right. The the the, the back wall screening is is at or above the rake of the, the main house, but actually the, the roof line is a good bit below the roof line of the the uh, original house from the from that uh, south elevation. So uh, so that's correct. It's yeah. you know, over well over a foot below the uh, original roof. Okay, thank you. And also one other very quick question of um, Kim. So you, you did get to go out, I guess it was this past week. And- um, A couple weeks ago. Everything was from the 70s, 80s? Yes, uh, it was a mish mishmash. I think there's a lot of salvage materials. We found um, hinges for some of the roof sheathing, a lot of evidence of fire. 
Um, there were definitely some old materials in there, but they were all salvaged. You could tell because they had different lath marks in, in places that obviously didn't have lath before. So yes. So it might have been the situation of a grandfathered footprint, and therefore they built above. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like there was a fire and they rebuilt with what they had left. Um, David, I have a couple of quick questions. Did, did you get a use variance for this to be to go convert from residential? It is commercial already. It's, it's already commercial. commercial. And then do you say so you won't do anything regarding like a ramp or accessibility anywhere? Uh, we're struggling with that. Uh, it is several feet up. And so we're having uh, difficulty you know, getting access, ADA access. Um, we haven't been through the permitting process, but at this point in time, we're just looking at temporary ramp or something that to accommodate, like that to accommodate uh, that need. Um, but there wouldn't be any permanent ramps or anything like that that we Thank have you. incorporated so far. Thanks. Also, uh, the location of the mechanical equipment just want to make sure. I'm sorry, I missed your, there was our question. The location of the mechanical equipment. Yeah, what we, we have in mind to do is look, uh, there you go. Um, we're going to have to, the, the back of the property is pretty tight and we're required to have two spaces there and they need two spaces. So we do have the, the trash cans and the, uh, and the recycling bin there in that corner right behind the, the, um, back of the building so the mechanical is going to be on on the roof here um but it should not be visible from any public right away it's it, I, I can't see how it would be and we can provide some sightline data information on that but um it should not be visible we've got a parapet around it and there's just really not any angle to see it but we we'll, we can look at that more closely and if i obviously i would screen it uh anyway but um there's just no other location to, to put it. We looked at on the, Kim, Kim and I looked at it as well. There's no, no locations on the north elevation. Obviously we don't want to put it in the south. So really the only thing that's left is, is the, on, the, on the east side, but there's no space there. You know, we just don't have any area. So the, you know, the only space available is really up on that roof. And, and we think we could, it's not going to be visible. If for some reason you can see it from some angle, which I'm, would be surprised with, we'll screen it accordingly. Okay, um, yeah, because it's a fairly low parapet, I guess that's why I ask, and you do have a view down magazine. Um, so a little bit of a concern if there's a screen or apparatus that needs to be added to the roof, that's obviously something that- Yeah, it's a pretty large roof area. So we would put it, we would put it on the north side of that roof um, as far as possible. Um, so that you couldn't see it in either either direction, um, but that's that's where we're at with that. And we've even we don't even I don't even we're not having even got any engineering on this uh, yet. So obviously we're going to look at some try to get keep that as low as possible. I mean our ceiling heights are low, our, um so we're trying to keep that whole thing as low as possible so we don't the whole addition as low as possible so that we don't overshadow the, the beautiful original structure. Any more board questions at this time? All right. We'll move on to public comment. We have a position statement uh, from the Preservation Society of Charleston that I'll read out. It's from April 22nd, 2021. Dear board members, the Preservation Society would like to thank the applicant for reaching out and walking us through this proposal. We also appreciate the opportunity to visit the site and view the existing addition, which we felt consisted primarily of modern materials and construction. Some historic materials were observed, however, seem to be salvaged and reused from other sources. We are very encouraged by this proposal to restore and bring back and bring life back to this prominent corner historic building. We find the approach to the addition to be appropriate and beneficial in cleaning up the complicated masking of the existing additions and are supportive of the project as proposed. Thank you for considering our position in this matter. Sincerely, Aaron Minigan. Kim, do we have anyone speaking from the public? We do, we have April Wood speaking. 
April Wood, Historic Charleston Foundation. HCF has met with the applicant and has reviewed the request for preliminary approval for repairs, modification, and expansion of an existing rear addition. With a series of framing exposures, we believe that the applicant has adequately addressed the BAR's concerns about whether the existing rear addition is historic, and we have no objection to the removal of this portion of the building for the new addition. With regard to the windows on the addition, it appears that there are multiple versions in this application. We believe the window pattern with the divided lights and panels below is the most compatible and appropriate for this portion of the building. We are pleased to see that this, this early historic building will be rehabilitated and adaptively reused by a local business owner, and we respectfully recommend approval of this application. Thank you. Thanks, April. Kim, do we have anyone else? For the That's public? all. All right. Kim, if you'll give us staff comments and recommendations. Just a couple. Um, it's much approved from the last time um, the applicant met, and we thank him for um, uh, the tour and uh, double checking the age of the addition. Just a few comments. Use a single door as previously proposed on the elevation. Recess the window plane for relief to retain the visual aspect of the original volume. We think it could go a little bit further. Um, and then lastly, relocate the gutters to the eastern side of the main house to drain into the planting bed instead of um, the western side draining into the corner. Um, and, and just one more comment to add a visual, um, a um, ver vertical piece of trim on those panels underneath the windows. Let me show you where. Forgot to add it right, right here, just in line with this million. Um, but with that, we're recommending approval. Final details to staff. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Uh, Mr. Richards, did you want to respond uh, to any of the public comment or staff recommendations? No, we're thrilled to get such positive support from all parties that have reviewed it. All right, so let's move into board discussion and a vote. Um, this is Julia. I think it is looking really good. And I was glad to hear the applicant say that his intention is to, to make it clear that this isn't an infill of a historic two-story porch. Um, and I had the same thought as staff about dividing that horizontal panel into two. I think that would be a subtle improvement, but I, I, I'm, Happy with it. Looks nice. This is Bill. I agree with, um, with what Julia said, and um, I appreciate the applicant um, providing the tour to staff to confirm the date of the um, the, the addition. Um, yeah, I, I agree with staff's comments and recommendation. The only thing I, would, I think I would add, either as a board comment or, well, I guess it would be a board comment, um, that. Um, that the applicant uh, basically modeled the actual size of the HVAC equipment proposed to be added to the roof. And um, there, there'd be some form of verification of a sight line um, of the visibility of those items, um, either via mock-up on the roof for staff's approval or a sight line study. But I would think a mock-up would probably do the job adequately and then in that, in that instance, Kim, we'd be leaving the screening apparatus of that mechanical equipment to your review and approval if we go with your motion, if you're okay with that. Yep, I'm fine with that. I just second that. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't really a motion, but yeah. Yeah, well, I'll call it that. Okay, I'll, I'll make a motion for, uh, let's see. So what are, we, what are we here? I'm sorry. Preliminary. Bill, before you make a motion, can I make one comment? Yeah, please, Lynn. Um, and I, I agree with everything that's been said. I think Julia's spot on and Bill mechanical study. Um, I just wanted to thank the applicant for doing the investigative work. I think that's what we should be seeing from applicants when there there is a question of age and, and they did what we asked of them and our city staff was able to confirm that. So that, that makes me very happy to know um, where we stand on all of that. And finally, I wanted to thank them for looking into the gate and retaining the gate. Um, 
if the 1980s theory holds true, I think this is probably a Philip Simmons inspired gate, or it was perhaps made in his shop by an apprentice. I don't think the quality is quite what he would have done at the height of his career, but um, I, I think regardless, it is, it is definitely worthy of, um, uh, of being retained and the latching mechanism, the, the way that gate is detailed um, I think it may have come out of a later version or, you know, sort of toward the later years of his shop. So that, that, that's all I have to add. Hey, um, okay. Uh, this is Bill. I'll make a motion for um, preliminary approval with staff's comments and a board comment that the mechanical equipment and mechanical screening uh, device of that equipment um, be uh, or appropriately um, rendered on the plans to the true size of the equipment being used and that um, a mock-up of the screening uh, location and height be provided for staff's review and uh, final review by staff. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor for preliminary approval with staff comments. And I do want to um, interject here that Ken had mentioned a fourth board comment to add a vertical, excuse me, a, a fourth staff comment to add a vertical piece of trim on the panels beneath the windows. Ken, is that, is that right? That is right. And then a board comment. Um, Kim, did you adequately capture Bill's board comment? I did. Would you like me to read it? Yes. Yeah. Preliminary approval with staff comments and board comment that the mechanical equipment and screening device be appropriately rendered on the drawings to the true size and the mock-up of screening location and final review by staff. How's that sound? Okay. And the mock-up is for staff review. Okay. For staff review, yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Bill. Do we have a second to Bill's motion? I'll second that. Yeah, put it to a vote. Fillmore? Yay yeah, in favor. Gwen? Yay yeah, in favor. Bill? Yay yeah, in favor. Julia? Yay yeah, in favor. The chair votes with the majority and the motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Richards. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, agenda item number five, 49 South Battery has been withdrawn. So moving on to agenda item number six, 48 South Battery. Kim, can you give us an introduction? Maybe. <laughs> 48 South Battery is requesting final approval for increased height and masonry coping wall to 42 inches. The building is a category two. It was built in 1846 and in the old historic district. Bear with me for just a minute. I'll take you on a tour. Okay, so here's the, the street, the house is on the north side. A little bit of a bumpy landing. Here we go. So you can see the neighbor um, to the east has a tall masonry fence, a wall I should say rather. As we drive along, there's the property on the right. And some existing conditions with this wall here. I believe this was um, a 2007 adjustment. 
um, Mr. Keyes might be able to give a little more insight to that. With that lovely tour, if Glenn wants to take it from here, Glenn, you have the floor whenever you're ready. Okay, thank you. Um, could you put up the first slide, please? Can you hear me now? Yes, we yes. can hear. Okay. Uh, so uh, this house uh, at 48 South Battery is in the kind of a low area on South Battery where water collects regularly during storms. Um, as you can see, if you go to the next slide, Kim, um, the next please. Next, the, the house is um, uh, is very low. The first floor is very close to grade. And as a result of that, um, water has been, uh, has come into the crawl space and into the first floor on several occasions. And the owner's ready to do some flood mitigation. Um, as you may remember, the two houses to the east, uh, it's it's been about three years ago, I believe, um, uh, installed those uh, masonry flood walls. Um, this one, we would like to retain this beautiful wood fence. We think it's a very attractive, very distinctive fence and gates. Um, and so what we're proposing to do, uh, can we go to the next slide? The, this is the uh, existing conditions. Um, next. Hmm. And you can see the height of the coping wall is 23 inches tall. Um, what we're proposing to do, and maybe the next slide is even better, Kim, it's an enlarged um, elevation. We're proposing to raise the um, coping wall to 42 inches. So that's 19 inches higher than it is currently, and will provide 42 inches of flood protection, obviously. Um, the gates, of course, are a concern. And so we're proposing to add wood panels on the bottom of those gates um, to provide, uh, I think, a, an appropriate design uh, change. Uh, and the columns would be retained and we'd be elevating them and building a masonry base below them and creating this kind of water table at, at the bottom. So we think we we love the fact of being able to retain this uh, this fence and we think it's been, um, we think it's a, a reasonable solution. Uh, we have consulted with um, uh, the Preservation Society and Historic Charleston Foundation, as well as the, uh, the neighbors Everyone has seemed supportive of this um, solution, and um, we would uh, ask for your approval. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Keyes. Uh, do my board members have any questions? Um, this is Bill. Um, Glenn, uh, what are you proposing to do at the gates uh, regarding the flood control? Uh, we'll be using the, um, the temporary flood panels that drop in the opening um, ahead of a storm. These are the kind that we actually use next door at 46 and 44. They're lightweight aluminum and they are really installed very quickly. I'm very impressed with how easy they are to install. Um, and they make them to the height you want, the width you want. So they would match that 42 inches of protection. Um, we've seen it uh, used in some of the previous uh, storms on those two houses and they work very, very well. So it is temporary, it comes and goes with the storm. Is there uh, any kind of a, a fixing of any kind of a, a mount system for those gates that's permanent that we would see or is that uh, all? No, these are um, just compression and we have a flat surface to work to on the, um, on the wood post and we can work to those. Great, thank you. Um, I have another question. Glenn, are you are we indicating that 
that the existing coping wall is just going to somehow be sliced off and picked up? Is that what you're thinking? I'm not. We will be a new coping wall because it will be a reinforced masonry wall to withstand the water. Gotcha. So it was new wall, but uh, reusing the wood components of the fence. Okay, thanks. Any other board questions at this time? All right, we'll move on to public comment. We have April Wood. Okay, and I was, I didn't know whether we have any preservation society comment here. Um, okay, go ahead, April. April Wood, Historic Charleston Foundation. HCF has an easement on 48 South Battery. The owners of this property have been excellent stewards of this important house. Unfortunately, they've been impacted by flooding during the 1000 year flood and subsequent hurricanes, exacerbated by weights caused by vehicles driving down the street during flooding events. Repairs have been costly and frustrating, but the owners have consistently been careful to protect and restore important historic features of their house. The proposed increased height for the masonry coping wall has HCS full support. We believe that this proposal is creative and successful because it provides additional flooding protection while also retaining the historic character of the picket fence and gates. It is also differentiated from the neighboring houses who have also recently constructed masonry walls. One comment in response to uh, Kim's earlier comment, the pedestrian gate on the west side is seen in the, this is Charleston book dated 1941. Uh, I don't know about the specific materials, but the, a gate was there that, that looked like the current one. We respectfully recommend approval of this application. Thank you. Thanks, April. Kim, do we have anyone else speaking from the public? No, we don't. All right, well, let's move on to staff comments and recommendations. Thank you. We applaud the applicant and the architect for the creative solution for maintaining the historic elements and character defining fence while taking protective measures to protect the integrity of the historic building. The staff's recommending conceptual approval with final review by staff. Any other elements to <laughs> detail? Thank you, Kim. Mr. Keith, did you want to respond to um, any of the comments from Historic Charleston or staff comments? No, thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's move on to board discussion and a vote. Who wants to kick us off? Sure. Um, I think, you know, for better or worse, the approval of those new walls at the two adjacent houses sort of opens the proverbial floodgates for this kind of thing. Sorry about that. Um, but I do appreciate that in this case, the old wood elements are retained, whereas I think at the neighboring houses, those beautiful panels are lost to us forever. So I have no, no problem with this. No more Wilson here. Um, I still contend that <laughs> In the long haul, this is not the way to deal with sea level rise and uh, increased nuisance flooding. And even though the wall, the masonry walls, the adjacent house is a, a very appropriately designed wall for Charleston, it is not a, it, it really is not appropriate for this streetscape. And I went down there today and drove down the street and looked at all this again, and it's clearly an anomaly in this area, in this part of South Battery. And as I said, even though it's it's clearly a very appropriate design for Charleston, and I supported that when it came along because of the nuisance flooding. Every time I drive by it, I have this twinge of regret. And in a way, I, even though the current proposal is much more sensitive, and I understand, you know, the sort of overwhelming desire to try to do something about the increased flooding. Um, I struggle because I think this is not the long-term appropriate way to deal with this, but this is clearly 
a sensitive approach and I understand it. And therefore, once again, I am reluctantly leaning towards supporting it. Glenn Gardner, um, I have a lot of the same feelings that Fillmore just across the board. Um, and every time I drive down the street, I do miss the fences that are now gone. Um, but at the same time, I am completely able to comprehend the reason they're gone. And I think in this application, the, um, the transparency of maintaining the wood fence above is extremely helpful. I think the wood fence does become pretty darn tall, but I also um, I think I'm in support of the way they're trying to do this without altering uh, the wood that was there aside from adding on the panels on the, the gates. So um, it, it is a, a bit of a precarious situation and um, you know, this does not solve the problem for the city, but I respect the uh, the endeavor of homeowners to try to protect their property. So I, I sort of lean in that direction on this as, as we ended up kind of leaning um, with the neighboring properties in the past. Yeah, this is Bill. I agree with the comments that were made um, and I agree with the staff's comments and recommendation. And uh, Glenn, to your point, um, it is, you know, a, a a measure that that a homeowner can take um and again now we're looking at elevating homes on top of everything else so um I'll, i would go ahead and make a motion for uh is this for final by the way or is this final make a motion for final approval um and it was a final re the staff recommendation was conceptual approval that was a that was a mistake i am oh. recommending final got it Apologies, Bill. I did not mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. That's why I asked. Um, so I'll make a motion for a final, final approval. And if there is a final review by staff, I'll put it in there. <laughs> we have a motion on the floor uh, by Bill for final approval with final review by staff. Do I have a second? Second, Glenn. Thank you, Glenn. Let's put it to a vote. Julia? Yeah, in favor. Fillmore? Yay in favor. Bill? Yay in favor. Glenn? Yay in favor. The chair votes with the majority and the motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Lucy. Thank you. We're just going to make him submit it one more time just for fun. <laughs> Your purview, Kim. <again. laughs> um, moving to agenda item number seven. Well, seven, 10 South Adrian's work has been drawn. Agenda item number eight, 1108 King Street has been withdrawn, and now we are on the last, the ninth and final agenda item, 250 Rutledge Avenue. Kim? Thank you. Let me just um, check Mr. Stevenson in here. And Ms. Stoney. There we go. 250 Rutledge Avenue is requesting conceptual approval for a rear addition to the existing duplex. The building's a category four in the Canterbury Elliott Borough neighborhood. It's constructed in 1895 and in the old city district. Here's an aerial just to familiarize yourself with the property, just north of Bogard. And some existing site photos. If you remember this building was moved from, um, from Harms Way where the Crosstown cut through and relocated in this location. You can see the piazzas in the wrong place. It should be on the south side. Some historic images. There's the 1902 and the 1944 Sanborn maps showing vacant parcel. And then there's a newspaper article from 1966 saying um, the Board of Adjustment will be um, considering to relocation of the building from 5, 505, 510 Rutledge. Um, and here it is on Rutledge Avenue in the Sanborn maps from 1921 and 1944. 
And here it is in location. And that's all the history I have. Previous motion uh, was for denial for height, scale, and mass and general architectural direction. And if Mr. Stevenson or Ms. Stoney wants to take it from here, you have the floor whenever you're ready. Okay, this is Neil. Is any you, can you all hear me? We can. Great. All right. Well, thank you. Um, again, this is you've all seen this before. Um, our client would like us to build an addition, and of course, space is is uh, tight. So we um, and and this house, unfortunately, this house is just so low. It's been a struggle for us. So. In our last meeting, we we listened to what everyone said and you know really agreed with all of it. Um, so we've done a number of things to address the issues. Um, one of them was to just reduce the size of it overall. We re lowered the ridge of the of the building so that it's a little bit lower than the main house, so that it has that hierarchy. Uh, I know it's just like scraping for inches here, but uh, we removed the dormer on the south side so that it's not, it doesn't jump out at you kind of, because it kind of did from, from Rutledge and from Bogard, frankly. Um, another thing we discussed, and, and you see this elevation that um, on the north elevation didn't change so much, but it's really a, um, except that we did uh, increase the hyphen uh, about eight inches just to make it a little more um, noticeable. And, um, and, then, um, and then really just tried to, um, we, oh, we added some windows on the south side just to help make that, that uh, view from Bogard Street a little more interesting and to get some light into the building. Overall, I think it, it helped the project. And um, uh, we also, we did some, we uh, mat matched the siding so that there's uh, horizontal siding, trying to keep it so that it talks a little bit more to the front building. We were, I think we were trying to deviate a little too far, but, um, but overall, um, not not a huge number of, of tweaks, but I think that what we did address the the some of the situation that, that people were concerned about. So, is that any all? Questions? Those? Any board questions at this time? Um. Yeah. Um. Is there, Kim, is there a site plan that shows the, just the mechanical equipment again? Just curious to know about that mechanical equipment location. That's right. The proposed location's right here. Got it. Thank you. Any other board questions at this time? All right. We'll move on to public comment. There is a commission statement from the Preservation Society. Stated April 22nd, 2021. Dear board members, the Preservation Society appreciates the applicant for approaching, for reaching out to us on this request and responding to our feedback. This proposal is moving in the right direction. However, we, can, we are concerned with the blank opening at the garage entry on the north elevation and feel it is inappropriate to create a condition in which parked cars are not screened. We encourage the applicant to study the custom folding doors to mitigate this visibility issue. Thank you for considering our position in this matter. Sincerely, Aaron Minigan. Kim, do we have anyone else speaking? Do yeah, we have Miss April Wood from Historic Charleston Foundation? April Wood, Historic Charleston Foundation. Uh, we have the we appreciate we also appreciate the applicant reaching out with revised drawings, and we have the same comments that the Preservation Society does about that garage opening. Thank you. Thank you, April. Kim, is that all for public comment? Yes. All right. It will give us the city staff comments and recommendations.
Yeah, the current proposal is much improved. We still feel that the open garage space is concerning and should employ a garage door. The staff's recommending conceptual approval with staff comments noted in final review by staff. Thank you, Kim. Um, Mr. Stevenson, did you want to respond to any of the, um, the comments from the Preservation Society or Short Charleston uh, or any of the city staff comments? Yes, actually, um, and, and in regards to the garage doors, um, actually with Kim's help, we, were, they, we, we have been able to find actually several companies that do a, a vertical rolling door that I think could work. We hadn't figured out all the details, but uh, that the intention would be to, to put those in. And if, if that's a condition, we're happy to abide by it. Thank you, Mr. Stevenson. Uh, let's move on to board discussion and a vote. Um, yeah, this is Bill, I'll go ahead and jump in. Um, I agree with the, um, with staff's comments and recommendation. Um, I guess regarding those doors, uh, potential garage doors, um, that one bay is fairly shallow. It's more, uh, if, if a you know, larger vehicle wouldn't be able to fit into a closed, enclosed garage in that space. But that, I'm sure that's just something that the owner will have to have somebody buy a smart car or something like that. But um, uh, I do agree with the, with the comments uh, forwarded by staff and the recommendation. I have nothing to add. I think um, sounds like likewise. Kim has done what, what he needed. So um, why don't I just vote a motion for conceptual approval with staff comments noted and final review by staff. Thank you, Julia. We have a motion on the floor for conceptual approval with staff comments noted and final review by staff. Do I have a second? A yeah, second, it's Bill. Thank you, Bill. Let's put it to a vote. Bill Moore? Yay, in favor. Glenn? Yay, in favor. Julia? Yay, in favor. Bill? Yay, in favor. Chair votes with the majority, and the motion passes unanimously. And that completes our agenda for this evening. Um, thank you, all. Thank you, Mr. Stevenson. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved, Chairman. All in favor? Aye. Aye.